All right, cyberpunks, welcome back to the Cyberpunk Lorecast. It is time again to gather around the glow of one of our favorite people, Jay Gray, who is joining us. The, the, uh, I, I don't know why I said glow, but um, I guess you're glowing. Is that a thing? <laughs> Are you pregnant? There's a, there's a light right above my head. Oh, that's what Kinda it is. Kind of gives me a halo. It's the, it's the light. This is your host, Tom, or Robots. I'm here, as usual, with Captain Logan, the most dangerous pirate on the seven seas. How's it going, Captain? Good, good. Although Sea of Thieves is just the one C, so I would be better off with just being the, I'd be happy just being the deadliest pirate in that one C. Yeah. And then worry about the other six later. Yeah, but you, we know you, you travel, you travel all seven of them. I mean, I can if you need me to. Where where are we going? It's how many servers are there? (laughs) There, And is each server its own C? uh there are a lot of servers i i no one really knows for sure because it's it's cross region but every every server is its own c and you can use the little portals and a little a little trick to hop from server to server so you just need to go to seven of those servers Mm -hmm. and then that's an accurate statement there you go there you go that's like that's like 24 hours worth of work right there <laughs> uh, you got the work cut out for you and that's why we love you so much because you're so such a hard worker but um a we're not here to talk work. about the seas of thieves we're here to talk about <laughs> cyberpunk man this is not how i expected the intro to go but it never is is it but uh yeah so jay gray is here jay gray from our Telsorian games one of our favorite people is back to talk about some of the some of the fun news coming for cyberpunk red so if you are into the tabletop or you're into the lore and that's what this show is about some of the time. I mean, whenever we can be of cyberpunk, then stay tuned for that because they've got some big announcements because it's the time of the year again for big announcements. And we're going to find out more about what's coming to cyberpunk red in the second half of this episode. But he's here to join us for the first half of the episode because we have a new series coming to this show where Logan and I and potentially a guest will be discussing one of the philosophies of cyberpunk. And we've kind of been setting up for this because we've been talking about the games. We've been talking about some of the media. We've we've talked about Blade Runner. We've been talking about some of the movies and things with our with our patrons. And there are there are theor- themes philosophical themes that happen in cyberpunk and those philosophical themes get fleshed out in different ways depending on the the game or the the media the movie the book whatever that that you're looking at so each of these episodes coming up is going to tackle one of those themes and we're going to talk mostly about cyberpunk's way of handling that whether it's red or 2077 or whatever but then we might actually expand out to that and talk about some other media and ways that those handle things and draw some connections and things like that as well so the theme for this episode is specifically immortality this is one of the themes that comes up again and again and again in cyberpunk media and is handled in some very interesting ways when it comes to cyberpunk red cyberpunk 2020 cyberpunk 2077 and i want to start this off because i'm going to be pitching some questions to my panel, my my genius panel here, Captain Logan and Jay Gray. And let's start out with Cyberpunk. We're, we're talking Cyberpunk Red. We're talking Cyberpunk 2077. What are what are some of the main ways that immortality is handled when it comes to Cyberpunk? And and morally, do you feel like there's a moral spin on it? Who would like to start? I think I think guests gotta yeah. go first, okay. right? That's the Jake. polite sure. thing, right? Yeah, Jake. So so let, let let's start with the oldest man in the world. The oldest uh, Saburo, man. The oldest Saburo man. Arasaka. Yes, Saburo. Uh, by the time twenty seventy seven rolls around, Saburo Arasaka. Remember, this man was a pilot for the Japanese Imperial military in World War Two. Um, and by that point, you know, a full grown adult. And yet in 2077, he's still alive. And so he is in his original body. As far as we know, um, he has achieved immortality the old fashioned way, which is to say lots of surgeries, some cyberware, probably a lot of cloned organs because um, cloning, being able to clone body parts is actually fairly common by 2020. Uh, it gets really cheap by 2045 fairly cheap to the point where bodies are no longer worth anything 
like it used to be in 2020, you kill a guy, you can drag his corpse down to a body bank and sell his organs with a donor card, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and get some good cash for it. Um, But by 2045, it is relatively cheap to clone the uh, body parts. And so organ transplant or organ harvesting isn't as big a deal unless things are like really rare, like, you know, left-handed hearts or something. Um, (laughs) Right. Uh, so, which is a thing. Uh, uh, some people might be laughing, thinking that's a joke, but um, or, specific body body part organs can come in left-handed versions where it, it's as if they're mirrored. Everything is function functionally the opposite as it is for most people. Mm-hmm. That that is a thing. Yes, it is a thing. So, uh, so he, you know, so you know, we can assume that he has had multiple transplants by twenty seventy seven. Like they're basically re- this. Like, oh, his heart's giving out again. So they reclone it yeah. and put it back in. And the thing is, of course, um, it's going to be better. But anybody who's ever had a transplant, even if it is a fully compatible, it still doesn't have the same lifespan uh, as a regular uh, or as as your natural grown in your body from birth organ would have. Right. Uh, so he is he has achieved uh, he is he is by twenty seventy seven probably reached the limits of what medical technology can do, and he has done that with millions upon millions upon millions of yen um right uh, dollars euro dollars yen currencies currency units uh he is one of the richest people in the world and because he is he can survive that long um i am not going to spoil certain things that happen in certain <laughs> paths in 2077 sure well, except to say that we, we the very can, obvious we can spoil it i, I think we're we're okay. at a point in the show where w- spoilers are open okay for this stuff yeah, so we've, we'll, we've we've definitely covered it for sure yeah okay. so we're gonna say so, if you haven't we'll just say right now if you haven't finished 2077 warning we we will spoil some yes. of the endings in this episode um yep. there you go so just be careful so uh towards uh, at the end of one branch of 2077 uh, a chip. Uh, we find out that Saburo is on a chip, much like Johnny was, and this chip is implanted in his son, and uh, uh, Yurnobo, and he basically takes over his son's body. And it's said that he requires that for the chip to be stable, it requires a relative genetic match, mm-hmm. uh, which is why it works in his son much better than Johnny's chip worked in V. Right, right. Because theoretically, uh, his son is his son is roughly a fifty. 50- percent match yes genetically. yes right. in theory yeah in theory. um uh so uh now here's some interesting things uh of course that chip technology is based on soul killer soul killer is a program developed by alt cunningham which was originally designed to create a stable matrix in which to develop artificial intelligences uh it was eventually uh weaponized to become a way of duplicating and this is an important fact duplicating a mental matrix somebody's brain um so here's the thing uh if you copy a computer file to a flash drive you are not in fact copying the computer file to the fra- you're, you're not exactly you're not mo- say you're moving it to a flash drive you're not saying it's not like physically picking up a pen and moving that pen over here right what you're doing is you're right. making a duplicate of it right. like you are making a photocopy right uh, and the same thing happens so Johnny on that chip is not Johnny. That is a copy of Johnny. It may even be a copy of a copy of a copy of Johnny. We honestly don't know. And every time you make a copy of something, it degrades just a little bit. Things change, problems happen, little random bits alter, um, especially something as complex as a neural map. So the same thing is, Saburo dies in that beginning. When, when Yurnobo mm-hmm. chokes the life out of him, Saburo is dead. A copy of Saburo lives and is installed, but it's not the same as the original man. It's, and that gets into the into a question. If you have all that person's memories and you have uh, all that person's, you know, thoughts, are you still that person or are you a copy of that person? Right. Right. Does the soul so, travel with it? Right. So, okay. So this opens up a lot of questions here. And this is one of those things that, um, is philosophy this is a big question in philosophy and this is hit on in many other uh forms of cyberpunk media uh mark 10 gamer in chat says so it's like a rich guy from altered carbon so if you've watched the altered carbon series very similar to this concept of you know, you know downloading yourself onto one of the um what's it called the stack 
that goes in, yep. in the base of your skull and then you can put that in another body a sleeve it's a, it's a lot like that um it's a very cool show if you haven't checked out that show um but yeah it's the same kind of thing you're copying the contents of your brain into a chip that then can go into another brain and then so on and so forth so it's it's a similar uh issue with something like star trek and teleporting you know, de- mm-hmm. you know, taking your body, reducing it down to uh, digits and then teleporting and then recomposing your body somewhere else. It's not actually your same body that was decomposed in one place and recomposed in another place. It's a copy of your body. It's not the same thing. It may have all the memories and all the feelings and all the, well, you know, the same functions of your body biologically and chemically in your brain, but it's not really the same you. So is that. <laughs> is that you yeah but uh, so here let me let me pose the question then when you when you go unconscious tonight and you go fall asleep and your conscious brain falls asleep and you wake up tomorrow morning is that the same you so but let's say first we're we're still in our body right right I haven't switched bodies overnight. You haven't switched. Same, like, right? Yeah, and, like, and I'm, I'm just let's. I'm, I'm moving steps from the familiar yeah. to the unfamiliar. So let's let's move the yeah. ingredients, right? So one gradient is let, let's let's move the smallest gradient, right? The smallest yes. gradient is from this second to the next second. Are you still you? I'm gonna say yes. For you, the most part, yes. We don't have yeah. any reason to think we're not, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. From one moment uh, to the, the next. The, it seems like I'm there's, still there's a, the whole argument to say that we evolve over time and who we are in the future sure. is not who we are in the past. But right, right. That, but that's for a, the most part, very it feels like thing. it feels like me. How am I? How am I even going to continue this sentence if I'm not a continual, you know, person? If I'm, you know, like right. okay. So what about when you go to sleep at night? Your conscious brain falls asleep. Your subconscious brain is still moving, but there are parts of your brain that are not functioning on a conscious level that effectively turn off. And then those conscious brain parts of your brain turn back on in the morning when you wake up. Are you still you, the same you, the next morning? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do you know? I mean, I don't. That that's that's always a question. I don't. You know, how how do I prove that I actually exist? Right. Okay. Is, is, is so, okay. So why? So so, so you don't know. Okay. So but why do you think so? because not, of repetition through yeah. experience same because, reason we don't stick our hand on the stove every time we because, turn it on okay so so you think so because the future version of yourself or so okay so let's say the current version of yourself can think back to the previous night when you fell asleep and uh-huh. you have a a what seems like unbroken continuation of memory right Yes. You've, you've got like this continuation. You remember going to sleep. You remember tossing, turning maybe during the night when you kind of regain consciousness a little bit. And then you remember waking up in the morning. You have this kind of unbroken, seemingly string of self-awareness. Yes, I, I am hopefully in the same place. Hopefully everything that I remember is being true before I went to sleep is, is true after I've right. gone to sleep. Even though there are gigantic gaps of like hour long moments where you don't actually have memories, you still feel yes. like that is still the continuation of yourself. So yeah. let me, let me, let me then pose the question. How is that any different than the version of Yurinobu or um, I'm sorry, the uh, Saburo, Saburo um, waking up in a new body, having a gap in his memory from being in the previous body, now being a new body, that version of him waking up and still having a continual memory of being his previous self. Well, we I kind mean, of, go ahead. Can, I, can I bring in a reference that kind of uh, adds, adds a little bit of flair to this? Sure. Uh, the, yeah. the show Invincible has uh, a character in it, which if you haven't seen Invincible, go to Amazon, please watch that show. Uh, but there is a character in there called the Mahler Twins. And the Mahler twins uh, constantly are making one clone of themselves so that there's always two of them. And in that show, it is a constant feud between the two about which is the original and which is the clone. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you know, you really don't have any idea because both have the exact same mental process, the same memories, the same body. And there's really no discernible difference between the two, but both will claim that each other or or that they are the original and that the other is a clone. 
So at that point, regardless of whether or not you wake up in a, in a body that is yours or a new body, if it's your memories and your distinct personality, if that is all 100% copied across, then it should be, it should just be you, shouldn't it? Well, that's yeah, my go, point is that go. wouldn't it feel like that, that yeah, version yeah. of you would still feel like it's the real you looking backwards, just like I feel like I'm the real me looking backwards to yesterday. Well, go one step further. Saburo has two sons that we know of, Kai True. and Yurinobo. Right. Kai's dead, but pretend Kai didn't die. Right. Yeah. Now pretend that there were two chips, each with Saburo on it. Right. And it gets slotted into each of his sons. Are both of them Saburo? I, I think they both think that they are at that point. They both think that they are. Now, and, and then this gets, into the, this gets into where philosophy reach, reaches legality. How do you legally, uh, how do you set legal precedent for this kind of technology <laughs> right. yeah, bringing that's... it forward? Because, I mean, inheritance is a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And oh, ownership. Yeah. Like, if I die, I no longer own my stuff. Oh, sure. But, you know, and I, you know, if, if I die, but I show up again and I can prove that I'm, the, I have my memories in this new body, do I own that stuff? Or does that stuff get inherited? And, you know, in this case, it gets inherited by his son, who he is. And so that makes life easier for him. But if there's two of him, one in Kai and one in, it, 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 one in each of his sons, do they fight over it? Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, how do you? And what does the law say about it? Right. Does there have if, to be some if, kind of will that says my clone self in my, my, my cloned brain in this body gets it, and my cloned brain in this body doesn't? If we'll, we'll, we'll take, we'll take aesthetics. If we take aesthetics out of the picture, say whoever's in charge of it, uh, the world is blind and, and no one can see each other. If mm -hmm. they both act and sound like a uh, Saburo, then it, you know, unless you had them in the, in the room at the same time, they would just, they would each own it themselves. There wouldn't, it, there would, it's kind of like the, uh, uh, we ha we have a, a kind of an example of this in Cyberpunk 2077 with the uh, the twins that you fight for your first fight when you go out and fight. There's two bodies; they're exactly the same, but it mm -hmm. is one consciousness. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But so, on the other hand, they don't own shit. Yeah. Yeah. I, right. I, I, they're, they're not super. <laughs> you yeah. Know, they, they, they yeah. are not a. They, they are not one of the richest people. A, a multi billionaire, if not a trillionaire, sure. in charge of one of the largest corporations on the face of the planet. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so aside um, from the legal sides, because I, I don't want to get too sidetracked yeah. on the legal side of this, because I want to stay on the philosophical yeah. side of this. Um, the, the but let, let's say Saburo put himself in a clone of himself. So you don't even have yes. the issue of children involved. The, you right. have no distinction. So you, my, my point is that you have two things happening. You have the legitimate death of Saburo as he was. Boom. Happening uh -huh. right there. So we know yeah. Saburo died. The version of him that we know as being him and died, a copy was made, a copy was, it would then have been put into a body, whether it's a clone or his son or whatever, a copy is put into a body, that body and that copy would then also legitimately feel like he is actually still himself. Yeah. No, at I, the I, same I, time. I, sort of, but. Look at the only other example of an engram, and a much better example because we actually have long-term examination of it. Um, you, Johnny is in your your body arguably for weeks. We don't know exactly how long between when you get the chip and when the game ends. They actually is because time is a relative concept where the game will let you pass day-night cycles for as long as you want. Right. Um, sure. And as long as you don't activate certain quest flags, but let's just say it's several weeks. And so there's a couple things here. First of all, we don't know if that's Johnny's direct engram or copies of Johnny's engram, how much degradation there's been before the chip gets installed. Um, the chip itself is damaged. And so that, you know, leads to some questions. What happens when the mind is damaged? If you have Alzheimer's, sure. are you still you? Most right. people would argue that you are. So we'll say that a, if, an engram is the original person or thinks it is that at the very least, um, and it's damaged, then it would be a lot like a brain being damaged. And therefore the engram is still that person. So going forward throughout the thing, there is Johnny has moments of, you know, I'm not Johnny. I'm just a copy of Johnny. 
Right. You right. know, and, and struggles with that. I you know, you know, a lot of times he's Johnny and he defaults to that, doesn't he? You know, when he, when he's angry or he's mad, he's Johnny. I did this. He talks about Johnny Silver. He doesn't talk about Johnny Silverhand. He doesn't say Johnny did this. He said, I did this. He doesn't say this is someone Johnny knew. He says, so I, so right. I knew. He has legitimate memories and guilt and, and those kinds of things. Yeah. Right. But there are times when he goes, you know, I'm just, I'm not the real thing. The real thing is dead. I'm just a copy. And that comes into play, especially with several of the endings where, you know, he purposely spoiling for the endings again. <laughs> he purposely gives himself up so that D has a chance. Right. Right. Yeah. Logan, it looks like you have thoughts. I I'm trying to, I'm trying to wrap my head around a couple of things that I want to, I don't think I can articulate it well enough, but I I'm very interested in the, the relics that we've seen, uh, at least at the end, uh, in spoilers again for the ending, there's a time or if you give, um, uh, Jackie's body to, uh, to, to the corpse mm-hmm. and they take his body and they upload his consciousness into, uh, uh, soul killer. I think it was, it's, it's the database that's in Arasaka. Yeah. Uh, yeah. your interaction with that engram, uh, or that copy is very, you know, it's, it's not, it's not actually Jackie. It's echoes. And, it's just like echoes and shadows of what his personality was. Yeah. Right. But, and, and part of that is because uh, they don't, I don't think they use the full relic on him. Okay. You know, my, my guess is, I don't think it's ever really explained, but my guess is there's very iterations going from soul killer to the relic. And as, let's be clear. The relic that Saburo is on is not the same thing as soul killer. It's that technology taken forward as far as can go. The point of soul killer was not, to make a copy of the body of, of the brain, which you can then install into something else. The point of soul killer was to get a copy, which you can then later interrogate for information. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it does not need a fully aware Jackie. It just needs enough of Jackie to be able to say, who put you up to this? Yeah. You know, and answer questions. So it could be that they didn't use it. Plus he was kind of already dead. Yeah. That, that was always um, my, that was my, always my sense true. of it was that it was a copy of a dead or dying brain rather than a yes. fully alive, aware brain. Yeah. That does kind of so, solve that problem. Yeah. So there's that, um, you know, and there are people like, for example, alts second generation, cause uh, the, the soul killer alt makes and never fade away, which is um, the story where we meet alt in cyberpunk 2020 slash cyberpunk red and the mission you play through in 2077, where you go to rescue her in Johnny's memories. Um, uh, that version is probably one of the most clean and capable versions. She specifically made that version so she could download herself and then read uh, upload herself into the matrix and then download herself back into her body very quickly. And, um, so that is a, but later on, uh, they make soul killer three and the priority is less on that technology and more on, uh, creating a better weapon, which means it's uh, soul killer two is for example, incapable of moving. You have to bring someone yeah. to it and feed them in. Soul killer three can move through the net and capture people. And in fact, it does. There's dozens of pers- dozens of hundreds of net runners and personalities that it, it, it captures during the fourth corporate war. Uh, it is a devastating weapon Arasaka uses against Militech. And just, um, just to jump in, uh, Soul Killer Three technically was an AI, correct? It was, yeah, a base level okay. AI. It was actually capable of adopting person, researching its target, and adopting personalities to fool its target into thinking you were, it was, it's that personality's that person's friend, that target's friend. Uh, so it was a clever mm. bastard of a thing. Mm. Um, soul killer two was, uh, it was, it was an Alexa. It was capable of interacting, <laughs> but, uh, but it could do much more than follow orders. Son of a, oh man. I got to get rid of this thing. <laughs> Crap. I have, yeah. I have, oh man, I don't want to get off topic, but I have questions about like voodoo boys in 2077 and stuff. <laughs> yeah. keeps talking about voodoo boys. <laughs> I really do. He's like, the I want more voodoo cool. boys. I want more voodoo boys. Like voodoo well, boys are awesome, it, but yeah, absolutely. They're neat. Yeah. It's it's the first it's the only it's the only bit in 2077 where we get to really kind of interact with uh um with the the wall and yeah. with mm-hmm. uh netwatch yes. and because of that it it feels like 
there was so much of a story that could have been built out and hopefully will get built out uh, between like, why is Voodoo Boys doing what they're doing? Why are they trying to get in? Why are they so interested in uh, Alt Cunningham's um, AI version? Uh, and, and there's there's so much there that I'm just trying to like wonder how how like what was the purpose of them like playing through the story i didn't feel like they wanted to do anything except for bringing down netwatch and i don't know that they that they really kind of knew what was coming if they did that okay so um this goes back okay so um as the net ran from 2013 the original cyberpunk to 2020 uh it was it was very much the william gibson-esque tron style net which is you know you jack in you might as well be on another plane of existence. Uh, it's this great, vast expanse of space where you basically can exist. It's like, even today, you spend a lot of time online, you make online friends. A lot of times those online friends feel much more real than flesh and blood person, I can touch you friends. Um, it's that same kind of idea, only this time. Now you can touch them, you can go to places. You, there were, night, in the 2020 era, there were like entire nightclubs they are completely virtual, you know, much like say second life tries to be imagine mm-hmm. a second life. <laughs> if you could jack your brain into it. Oh man. You yeah. know, there are people living entire lives where okay. they were, and there were Very philosophical disturbing. explorations that where people were like, Oh, well, it's not just this collection of servers and wires. It really is another plane of existence. There was a almost spiritual sense to it. And the voodoo boys are an extension of that. They, either know because they've gotten stories from it or they've built up this idea in their own mind that what's beyond the black wall, AKA the old net where you can have full immersion. Um, mm. uh, and, and the best net runners can briefly get through the net and see the other side. And that's part of what T-Bug does is they briefly touch the old net and that's why they can do hacking from such a distance. Um, but they, so they have this, this thing where they think if they just break through, and they know that to break through fully, they need to talk to the AIs because the AIs are the ones who helped build the wall, they think, because Netwatch couldn't have done it on its own, right? Yeah. So they need the AIs to help them get through the wall so that they can be part of this spiritual, virtual, other reality. Mm. That's what the Buddha boys want. And they want Alt Cunningham, probably because Alt feels like the most human and capable of talking to them on their level ais she's like the patron saint of the <laughs> yeah well i mean i think most ai there are different kinds of ais i think we may have talked about this but there are different kinds of ais in cyberpunk yeah, yeah. there are pseudo ai pseudo ais are expert systems they're advanced alexis advanced series they you can have entire they can technically uh pass the turing test mm-hmm. but they're not truly intelligent there are uh human AIs made by soul killer, like Alt Cunningham. They were humans whose engrams got trapped on the net. There are spontaneous AIs, basically AIs that have just generated. And the spontaneous AIs don't think like human beings. Right. And in fact, they have trouble communicating with human beings and human beings have trouble communicating with them. Because they're completely um, foreign to, to us. That right. Reminds me of those two AIs that, uh, or there was an article that got put out about two of how they created two AI their own language. They, yeah, yeah. Their own blockchain code that no one actually knows what's actually being said between them. Oh my God. Yeah. They had to shut it down because the AIs learned to communicate each, with each other in ways that made no sense to, to, that is, to their handlers. Yeah. That is frightening. That is, this <laughs> yeah. is the beginning of and Skynet. It, yeah. It's the same kind of idea. Um, and, and cyberpunk in the old net, the, different regions would literally develop their own personalities because so much information was flowing through them that they would spontaneously form essentially the pathways that communications and information was flowing through became neural nets. Yeah. So they developed personalities and, you know, you ask yourself, okay, why a black wall, right? If the old net is so dangerous, it's so filled with rabbits and rage Bart Moss's <laughs> AI love children that want to destroy everything these the old net is not some is not an astral plane it exists on physical servers why has a net watch in the 57 years since the fourth corporate war sorry 54 years since the fourth corporate war gone to all these places and shut down or destroyed all these old servers why are they still operating the answer is the ais live on them and they have some kind of deal with them yeah there's something going on 
So the and, Voodoo Boys are trying to get on that same level, so they feel like they maybe have a better, better playing field to battle Net Netwatch with. In that no, case, no, the, the Netwatch, the Netwatch battle is incidental. Okay. The reason they're fighting Netwatch is because Netwatch doesn't want anyone to break the fort, the, the Black Wall, because that's sort that of like sense. saying that's that's like letting say, oh, well, if we let everybody have nuclear weapons, yeah. or you know. You know, if we put the button to launch nuclear weapons in everybody's kitchen, eventually someone's going to press them no matter how much we tell them not to press it. Right. Um, it's the same kind of idea. The, the, you have to understand how absolutely devastating the end of the fourth corporate war was. It was not just unleashing all these rabbits on, you know, the world was at that point entirely dependent on the communication through the old net. Everything was wired to it. Everything. Mm -hmm. Phones were wired to it. Databases were wired to it. Uh, satellite communication was wired to it. Everything. Thousands upon thousands of people died because of Bart Moss's virus. And it gets worse because it wasn't just the rabbits. It was the data crash virus, two different things mm -hmm. to, to unleashed at the same time. The data crash was a bit swapper. If you know, this thing, this, this, this recipe for a cookie <laughs> is made up of bits, and zeros, ones and zeros. And this, diagram of a tank is also made up of ones and zeros mm -hmm. suddenly you know just swap a few things so get cookie you, tank you need yeah you, know, you, you need cookie tank. you need a cup of you need a cup of of milk and suddenly over here it's telling you that you need uh you just switch that one cup yeah with with the 20 the, the, the 20 tons of steel you need right. or you know so and the thing is is so uh since everything was online and less and less stuff was paper all the stuff you used to make things, all the blueprints, all the diagrams, all the formulas, all this information got corrupted. So you can no longer trust that stuff. And that's why it took so long to build back from the end of the fourth corporate war. So after seeing the world have this horrible cataclysmic digital event, Netwatch wants to do everything they can to prevent it from happening again. And the Voodoo Boys don't care about that. They just want to get to the other side and experience the full net in all its glory. And gotcha. Netwatch wants to stop them, so they don't care about bringing. Some of them probably do. Some of them, you know, have a mat on for Netwatch in the same way that if a if the cops chase criminals long enough, the criminals yeah. will want to take down the cops. But it's not about the cops; it's about what the cops are trying to stop them from doing. Right. It's about it's that about getting sense. what they want. Yeah. And well, that's guys. that's why uh, uh, Arasaka was so powerful after the Fourth Corporal War because they had that that library that they were keeping the actual truth kind of sealed away. Yeah. No, that library was at the bottom of the arasaka towers so not really not as much anymore yeah no um the arasaka <laughs> got actually arasaka didn't it wasn't very powerful after the fourth corporate war the japanese government stepped in and said you went too far um arasaka regains power after they, they become a small regional co corporation for a while but uh sometime in i think the 2050s a arasaka security guy saves the emperor's life from an assassination attempt and after that, they're allowed to rebuild and they become powerful again. Yeah. Uh, no, that was Arasaka's plan. Absolutely. They're saying we, they could see that this was happening. Yeah. And they said, well, we'll create this untouchable database and only we will know. But no, that untouchable database was built in the tower in Night City that got nuked. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that, in fact, is part of why the team, what the teams were sent in there was to retrieve that database because Militech in the United States wanted it. Didn't quite happen nice man that's a lot that was very dense thank you for all that info that was awesome oh you're welcome um yeah no there, there is a lot of lore there and it's tough to tell especially since your point of view in that is johnny mm -hmm. and johnny is as i've said before a copy possibly of a copy right on a damaged ship right this information is all being filtered through someone else's brain right yeah and at the same and and worse he's an unreliable narrator because everything he does is all about him i promise you morgan blackhand was at that mission mm. but gee there's no morgan blackhand to be had. and samurai had long since broken up before that mission yet somehow there was a samurai concert right before johnny got on that helicopter mm -hmm. you know yeah. and that's just like you know how they say that eyewitness testimony is really unreliable because after a while your brain starts jumbling things together oh yeah he's remembering Absolutely. samurai's farewell concert jumbling it with that mission because they're both two pivotal moments in his life right and he kind of wishes one led to the other because one changed his life they both uh. changed his life um and then of course he removes the other alpha male in the scenario right that makes sense you know Rome uh. is like 
not doing anything. I don't know if you noticed Rogue, yeah, yeah. who is ten times the fighter he is. Right. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. And in yeah. that whole scenario, he's just like single shotting everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So does that mean that spider really does say really off the wall random stuff or was that oh, no, that's, that's actually probably pretty that's, right on that's accurate. spider but spider might be the best might be the only thing that came out of it no so spider murphy um as everybody knows um a lot of times in role-playing games iconic characters come from actual play sessions uh everyone thinks for example that mike played morgan blackhand or johnny silverhand the truth mm-hmm. is while he's played both they are usually npcs in his games spider murphy on the other hand is lisa pond smith's one of lisa pond smith's classic characters she played spider murphy and in her words spider murphy is a is a uh, latina woman with very long black hair down to her butt uh, <laughs> her butt specifically who, who is who is absolutely known for saying crazy things and so nice. they got that they got that clear off and they got the, the whole combat armor thing she's wearing is actually supposed to be a variation of the oh, net nice. runner armor she wears yeah in a couple of the pictures in the book um i i'm sad we never get to see her icon because her icon is this this ethereal uh anime naked anime elf spirit oh. girl uh-huh. oh. um uh but yeah no she is a great character and yeah no the the, the do, do rats do do cat do rats eat cats do bats shit nats <laughs> yeah. thing is yeah, yeah. Is, <laughs> is, is, is perfect spider murphy and the thing is spider murphy's fun and strange but she's relatively sane compared to say rage bot ross and she interprets for him in a lot of her books mm. yeah, it's interesting i pulled up the images how um I, I know the the um, the art from the the book, and to look at the character in the game now next to the art from the book, and and the helmet specifically, yeah. is actually very similar. It looks great. It's yeah, it's, it's always lot, really cool. A lot of good similarities there. We we, yeah. we were actually there um, to give you an idea of how it worked. Just some behind the scenes stuff is there was a meeting Mike had with their uh, with some of their uh, their. I forget exactly the exact position. It was one of their animators, person who's in charge, literally addressing people. And they said, okay, here's Santiago. Here's our Santi- Nomad Santiago. Here's our Spider Murphy. Here's our Alt Cunningham. Here's all these characters that you would, you specifically invented, Mike. And can you tell us, you know, is this cold? And he's like, well, you know, you know, because, you know, there was like, uh, Nomad Santiago looks a little too, like, too much like Johnny because they both had the long black hair. Mm. So there were some changes there. Spider Murphy, and there was limits too, because they can't, there's only so many new assets they could create at that point. Uh, so they had to work with assets they had already had in a lot of cases. But it's, yeah, it was, uh, we worked, for, he spent like an hour going over what they look like with them and changing outfits. And it was really cool to see how they do it. Cause it's like, Nope, boom, boom. boom. It's like, uh, it's a lot like the character generator. Yeah. Just no, this, clo- this, this close, this close, this close, this close. Right. Boom, boom, boom. Except for a lot more versatility. Cause you can get into lots of little nitty gritty details like, yeah. uh, boots, pants. It was really cool. Um, but yeah, no, they work with Mike specifically on the look of people like spider. She's there for what she's on screen for less than a minute. Yeah. It's not very long. I know, yeah. but it was important to them to make her look as much like how we envision Spider Murphy. And Spider Murphy, when she goes on a job, when she has to be there physically, she wears armor because she ain't stupid. <laughs> she, yeah. she ain't stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we've got to we got to do the mid show thing, and then we've got to talk about some cyberpunk uh, red stuff. Yep. So why sure, don't yeah. we do that? We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, here we are in the middle of the show, and this is the part where we get to thank our patrons for helping to support the show. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. If we've done anything to help you get through your workday or your commute or your workout or, you know, just, you know, making some burritos, you know, whatever it is, then please consider heading over to patreon.com slash cyberpunk lorecast and checking out the different tiers. Even at the base tier, you get ad free episodes, early episodes, all sorts of good stuff. Go check that out. And, um, if you sign up for the upgraded 
tier, then you can join us in just two weeks to actually be on the podcast and chat with us about the topic of the month. And we haven't decided exactly what that topic is going to be yet. But if you do sign up now or early, you can chime in on the discord. You get access to the special discord channel where we can all discuss what that topic is going to be. You can chime in and tell us what you think we should be talking about. And we'll come to a consensus and talk about what that's going to be and then talk about it on the show. So go check that out. And thanks again to all of our patrons we've got to go talk about some awesome stuff so why don't we go do that now here we go all right jay we're back and cool you've got some you've got some goodies to share yeah. So first, um, no one in the podcast, this is great, great radio. No one in the podcast will be able to see this, but I'm holding uh-huh. up a picture. Uh-huh. So uh, we have a spinoff game of Cyberpunk called Cyber Generation, which is an alternate timeline um, where things get worse. Oh, good. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, basically, we uh, it's the, the United States is now the incorporated states of America. Um, oh, God. There is there was a deadly <laughs> nano plague that is melting adults and giving kids superpowers. And uh, okay. Yeah, it's 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 a cool it's a cool um, kind of like X Men meets Cyberpunk kind of story. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there's an adventure which is now available uh, and print on demand from Drive Through RPG uh, called Bow Steel Day, which is the introduction. And Spider Murphy is a central part of it. And that's that's yeah. her with her nice. hair up in a in a re-education camp. Nice. Uh. <laughs> the, the adventure That's involves cool. yes yeah uh, in um in cyber generation uh large portions of the population are homeless and the way they're dealt with is they are sent to camps to be re-educated into productive members of society that always sounds yes. great that's always yeah. a good yeah. solution yes guess guess who never comes never uh never leaves the camps um everybody um <laughs> so anyway i thought that would be fun to see if we just talk about it yeah. Uh, but yeah no we have some stuff out so uh we were supposed to be at gen con this week gen con for those of you who aren't don't know is a annual tabletop gaming convention that has been around for over 50 years it is the largest in north america uh it is wonderful uh, it used to be run by tsr back in the day it is now its own independent uh the makers of dungeons and dragons the original makers of dungeons and dragons is now its own independent thing we were going to go it was gonna be great we had all these volunteers we're going to be running tons of games we get the biggest booth we've ever had <gasps> and then we just looked at it was great we looked at the numbers and we're like oh no we can't if even one person in our crew comes home infected and it's like uh, it just wasn't it was, it yeah. wasn't good it's just not safe so it's, so we pulled it's, out. it's a good choice you guys should stay safe it would be very it would be very upsetting if somebody was to come down with something and you know no it is it would yeah. be if someone brought it home to their loved ones or the community yeah. and it just it just wasn't safe enough even with even with mask mandates in the convention center there weren't any outside of the city itself i mean you go to any of these conventions just normally not not during pandemic times and everybody comes home with the flu like that's just Con- normal. It's a real thing. Yes. Yeah. So um, normally during these conventions, we hold seminars where we announce, we say, here's what we're working on. And since we couldn't do that today, I'm going to talk to you about, here's what we're working on. All right. So For what are you working on? You we've are, got, we've got like, Gen Con. we've got 20 minutes. So you've got, you've got the rest of the show. Go for it. Okay. So what's out right now? Of course, the core rule books out, jumpstart kicks out. Yes. And the data screen is out, which is the GM screen we all know about that we also have released 11 individual what we call dlcs which are pdfs uh between say five and 20 pages long uh which contain additional content you can download for free from our website to add stuff to your games it covers everything from uh what we call hardened enemies which are enemies uh that fall into classic tiers mook lieutenant etc but are more difficult mm-hmm. to um to fight uh, so if you have a very combat heavy crew you do that also two different supplements about elf lines online the premier mmo of night city where you can stop playing cyberpunk and start playing elves uh in a cyberpunk setting what uh, wait, actually, wait 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 the, the elves, oh, the elves aren't in the cyberpunk setting you could be in a cyberpunk setting jack in two elf lines online and play a fantasy game within your cyberpunk game that's funny wait okay so how does this work <laughs> wait wait that's great. It, use, it uses a technology similar to Brain Dance. It's essentially a VR technology that uses some of the Brain Dance. So you 
you you you feel like you are part of you are in this world and mm-hmm. you have a, you have full sensation um and yet you're an elf and you have to you it's a pay to play game so you can buy advancement and you can uh <laughs> buy buy equipment with real money we have rules for that too um so uh we've done all these things and now next of course what's what's next what are we gonna put out next right uh, we got okay. a couple things in the works we have something called the data pack cyberpunk red data pack and that is a multimedia project uh which comes with uh not multimedia as in like video and print but multimedia as in multiple different things within one package mm-hmm. so it comes with 50 character sheets we've retooled the character sheet to be double-sided instead of three page it comes with uh a uh, six double-sided 11 by 17 maps for a total of 12 different maps. Wow. Yeah. Uh, wow. All gridded. So you can use them for combat, um, made by, uh, both monster fight club and block battle mats, both two very good companies yeah. uh, and map map makers. There is, uh, and then there is the booklet and the booklet has six screen sheet adventures, which is one page is in world news print that you can hand your players. And the back page is a one page adventure you can run. There's some really cool ones in there. And then there are six, what we call 20 things lists, which are, uh, or random encounter tables, which are basically six lists of 20 each people, places, or things. Uh, and the great thing is, so uh, you say, oh my guys are going to a bar. I need a bar for them to go to. Oh. We have a 20 hotspots in night city or my people just killed a guy and I need to know what's in his subdermal pocket. We have a 20 things you find in a subdermal pocket, 20 things, people you meet on the, on the subway. Uh, oh that's cool uh, i love i love so, random tape i love tables i love yep. using them for random stuff i love mm-hmm. i like w- when i run my own adventures for things i like so backing up just a little bit uh when yep. i was in college i spent three years as part of an improv group um two of those <laughs> years i won improviser of the year as voted by the audience so go me thank you i mean it means <laughs> when the audience votes for you yeah so people like me they really like me um but the part of in any adventure i feel like randomness is a significant part of the storytelling because yes. um you as the gm or the uh referee depending on what kind of type of you know story you're doing or adventure or whatever um you're a big part of it the players are a big part of it but then randomness is the secret sauce and mm-hmm. having a table like that is i i I, I will not do an adventure without some sort of random table because yep. it's, I don't know. I can't say enough good things about having a good table of stuff where you can just be like, Oh, I, you know, I'm going to go over here and look around the corner. What's around the corner. And I didn't plan a thing. So give me a table and I just roll a dice or something. And yep, this is what's around the corner. That's where we're going. You know, like, Hey, great. And the lovely thing is, is, uh, so these are written by Melissa Wong, who is a new freelance writer in our, in our stable, our bullpen. Uh, if you're, if you know, if you're old enough to know what a bullpen is, um, <laughs> and, uh, Melissa doesn't write, Oh, here is a, here's a, you know, one page table. And it's just one through five. You encounter, you go to this, you, a restaurant named blah, uh-huh. what she writes is a full description. Here's what the bar is like. Here's what the person who runs it is like. Here's their spe- here's a bar specialty drink and how much it costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, cool. these are each not only cool descriptions, so you have enough to really riff off of because you've been there. You, you you're running the game. Your players do something. They go someplace, and you're like, oh, I gotta come up with something there, and I don't know. And a name is good. A description is better. Okay, so can we can we roll a dice right now? Can you give me? Uh, can you just pull pull a sheet out? Pull a, do you I have gotta, a sheet? I don't. I don't, do I have, I don't have it yet. Cause it's, it's, wait, I can oh, get it. Okay. One? Give me a second to call okay. up on my phone. Yeah. Pull, pull one up. We'll what, what, what type of dice do we need? This is, this is really cool that, that, that we're basically, and this is something that's in addition to red. So for folks that are enjoying red right now, yeah. this you is a great way to play them. That's, but that's, it's good to, but yeah, no, you, know, you don't need it, but it, you can add it to your adventure and it, it just spices okay. it up a little bit. All right. How many, give how me many one sides? second. Uh, you need a D 100. Okay. Uh, Cyberpunk Archive, Cyberpunk Data Pack, booklet. Okay, we'll go to. You want to do the bars? Uh, yeah, that works. Let's, let's just do a we'll bar. Go bar. We'll do a bar. Okay. Let me go to the bars real quick. Twenty things in Night City. Twenty freelancers in Night City. Which is great. These are like 
half a column peoples 20 hotspots go ahead give me a d give me a d100 roll all right here we go uh and we really upset if it's not 69 30, uh, 69 <laughs> 38 yeah uh, uh, 36 through 40 red line red line is a place to watch fights not bar fights no red line being the best of augmented and unaugmented mixed martial arts Ooh. the entire bar is built around a window lined fighting pit customers willing to book the private viewing rooms 100 eb to 1000 eb depending on uh, the fights get to sit up against these big armored windows watching people fight each other while waiters and waitresses bring them their drinks and their bar snacks less wealthy customers can hang out in the bar area watching the fights from the cage top of the pit or on screens mounted on the walls the cage on top of the fighting pit is a new addition installed after a cyber fighter threw her opponent clean out of the pit and into some customers officially all fights <laughs> are to the knockout and red line maintains a trauma team membership so fighters who get badly uh w- what's our rating uh as deadly as possible uh effed up King <laughs> oh, oh our, our, our show rating <laughs> i thought you meant yeah. what's the rating of the bar <laughs> no 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 <laughs> that's uh, really whatever up. that's how yeah it's yeah how it's up. just yeah. however yeah. the rumor goes that there are death matches every month on the new moon for special guests and customers only <laughs> owner propriety jenny nails denies all of that naturally signature drink the winner's cup salty beef bullion made with a bullion cube nowadays cognac worcestershire sauce ah. lemon juice and a garnish of soy bacon 20 eb mm. per glass nice okay <laughs> can we do can we do one more real, real okay. quick do you have do you have something yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. for like, we'll like do a different list okay, okay i want a list for things i can pickpocket out of the the dumb corpo guy next to me's pocket okay we'll do it for 20 things uh 20 things in a in a subdermal pocket okay so in cyberpunk red you can get a subdermal pocket which is a small pocket located in your body Yes. Okay. So, so I noticed the the corpo next to me, and I pickpocket his subdermal pocket, which sounds super gross. <laughs> it is absolutely disgusting. Yes. yes. We'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll do we'll wrap this around as as you're in a fight, you got done kicking killing this guy in the back alley. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, we, we, the, no, no, no. no. I saw him in the. You're I was at in the bar the... watching a fight. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, we, I went into the bathroom, and he was in the bathroom being a complete douchebag, and I decided yes. to, to punch him out. Now I'm stealing something out of his of his ser- 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 pocket because okay. he's a R- is roll it, it for me. Is, is this a 20? Yeah, no, these all, they're 20 things, but they're all D100. Okay, so they're all D100. Okay, cool. Here we go. Um, this is not called a flesh pocket. This is 82. Um, 82. 82. We like the word subdermal. Okay. Um, flesh pocket. So these are much shorter. Uh, as you notice, that one was long. For most of these are uh, half, a, half a column uh, mm-hmm. long. The 20 things is a much shorter one. This is just simple. A single plastic earring. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's great. Why would I he have that, that in a subdermal pocket? You never know. <laughs> Who knows? That's the mystery. You know, but but there's a whole story. Smells there, really bad. I, I would go further. I would. I would. T- I think I say it's a single plastic earring covered in blood because earlier tonight this guy killed. Oh God! His mistress. Oh. And oh, her blood no. got on the earring. Oh, uh, his and blood he got kept on the earring. She fought back. So oh. he took the earring, so his DNA would not be at the scene of the crime. Oh God! Okay, yeah. Okay, this is. I can see where this is going. This is wonderful. Okay, yep. this is. I love this stuff. This is great. Yeah, yeah. That's so the, that's what's that's what's in the data pack. Uh, we're very excited, and it, we're looking at probably it's going to be twenty bucks uh, MSRP, may, uh, our, our suggested retail price, and we're hoping to have this out next month. Nice. The world sucks. <laughs> Shipping is weird. Jeez. There's literally a cardboard shortage of all the things to have a shortage of cardboard. People yeah. are fighting over cardboard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I used to work in packaging. I, I, I was, a, I designed packaging. Did you know that? I was a packaging designer. Yeah. 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 I did not know that. For, sir, I salute you. I, I love packaging engineering. Packaging engineers yep. are freaking brilliant geniuses. I did it. I, I stumbled into, I stumbled into that job uh from i went from being knowing nothing to being mm-hmm. a part-time packaging designer for and then within three months went full-time and then within six months of that i changed jobs to becoming the only packaging designer at a different company and the manager of their entire packaging design wow <laughs> i mean if you're the only one i was the only one i i everything that ran through that entire plant after only nine months of experience in the industry was on me this well, guy uh, well, so, so if you what? were like, you did the really cool stuff, like, like the boxes are all folded up and like, yeah, I did everything, the, everything, cool. everything from but like if, simple if, boxes if, to, if, uh, like if, displays and also like, if, yeah. if you're the clamshell guy, I hate you with a burning passion. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, this was all like, uh, this was corrugated Power? and foam. 
it wasn't yeah. it wasn't plastic yeah so so the the, the gray cardboard they use in uh gm screens board games that kind of thing there mm-hmm. is a shortage of it right now yeah so oh, that, that that causes delays and things um <sighs> moving on yeah we also next as we're also working on hopefully have out sometime before the end of the year the netrunner deck Ooh. So net running, uh, I actually have picture. I have, I have that too. I actually have a prototype we made up. Um, so the net running in cyberpunk red is, uh, you, you go there, you have programs on your cyber deck. Uh, mm-hmm. there's a net architecture. There are black, there's black ice. You've got to fight. There are, uh, demons that control control nodes and those control nodes control things like turrets in the real world. Right. And, uh, so we made, and it, we made these cards. It's going to be backwards because oh, my camera. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I'm going to actually zoom in on you. There we go yeah oh cool yeah nice. so um uh we worked with an artist who actually made these as a project and put them out on the web and we we're like we love those so much we're gonna buy them oh, that's cool um and so uh they basically the idea is you can uh load your cyber deck with the programs like the sword here <gasps> so reason for uh, my Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Um, yes. yes. Someone, <laughs> someone was absolutely saying that they said that you know this is, this is the reason you get your your, your Yu-Gi-Oh deck and you put put your cards on it, get your um, deck on it. That's uh, that that's awesome. You, you can build what's called a net architecture, which is the network you dive through and fight oh, various yeah. things and overcome the various obstacles with the other cards. And because uh, the cards create, allow you to create a visual version of it to make it a lot easier, so it's not just uh, a, it's not just a dungeon that you draw out or you say in your head, you say, mm. you lay down the cards on the thing and then you flip them over and say, okay, well now you're facing a killer. And in theory, you could also create random net architectures with these. Um, and yeah. like, but they're like, Oh, that's uh, kind of fun. Item. Yeah. This sounds like a version, like a li- like a real life version of slay the spire where you're kind of progressing through a dungeon yeah. and each person has like different things that you come across, but you never really know what you're going to come across until you flip the card and you have sort to deal with it. Yeah, sort of, kind of. The way the net running works in red is we call it an elevator. There are floors, one through whatever to the bottom. Oh, yeah. And on each floor, there is a thing. And you have to go from floor one to floor two to floor three to floor three. So floor one, you might be at the top, and there might be a password he has to get through. And so you run the program You run the program to, to decipher the password and get through. Floor two, there might be a black ice, like a hellhound. You have yeah. to fight that. Yeah. And you can choose to fight it, or you can try to get pa- You can run past it. If you just run past it, it will follow you. If you, you could do something called sliding, which is basically you go around it and it won't know where you are. And so it stays where it is. And you go through, you can reach the control nodes and the control nodes control things in the real world, like turrets or doors or cameras. And mm-hmm. you can take control of them from things called demons, which are programs designed to control those control nodes. Uh, and if you get all the way to the bottom, you reach essentially what's the CPU. From there, you can insert a virus. And that virus is something you program on the fly. It allows you to make a fundamental change to the net architecture. For example, you can make it so that the next time you come, it recognizes you as a system operator and nothing attacks you and all the passwords open up for you. Or you can make it so that all the hellhounds will attack only the system administrators and not you. Or you can make it so everything looks purple. It's up to you what you want your virus to do. You could you could you could program it so that the turrets automatically recognize employees. Hey Larry, I think we got enemies. hacked. Why do you think we got hacked? Everything's purple. Yeah. So so you know it's 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 a, it's a it's a simpler system than the old 2021 where you were doing these very complex dungeon ra- crawls. That's what they were. They were these very complex dungeon crawls. Where you're going from room to room to room, almost like a like a roguelike, like yeah, a classic yeah. roguelike. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot easier to run during the game and net runners have to be present. Right. Uh, your net runner has to be within six meters of the Remember that uh, access change. point. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. So th- that we're hoping to have out. I think it's going to be seventeen dollars. It comes with fifty-two cards. Uh, we're very excited about it. If the deck, if this deck does well, we're going to start looking at gear cards, guns, and other things. So wow. that, you know, the GM doesn't have to say, "You find this gun. Here is its stats." They pull out the card and say, "You find this gun. Here is its stats." Nice. That's cool. Um. So we're looking at that. Um. Then uh, we talked about. Let's see that interface red is the next thing I talked about the DLCs we have for free. What we're doing is we're taking several of them, the first set of them, and we're putting them together into a printed and PDF and digital book. Uh, you can get the PDF version or you can get the printed version. Uh, 
and you say, well, I already have these for free. Why would, why would I want the printed version? There's two reasons. One, even though we give it away, it costs something to make. We have to pay the writers. We have to pay the art when there's new art. We have to pay the layout people. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all has, it's all done by staff, but that staff still has to have a salary cost paid. So it costs money to make free things. And we appreciate you paying for them when you can. Uh, the other thing is we're putting something new in it. Uh, in every interface read and we're planning and continuing to put them out. This is volume one. There'll be volume two down the road, volume three. Uh, and every one, there'll be at least one new w- article. And that new article will contain content that's not available anywhere else. In this case, it will contain well, an article we call all about drones. And so you'll have, um, if uh, Logan will probably remember this since he's been through the book enough times, uh, there's this big giraffe looking thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, there is a drone we call the G the, the giraffe three, the G R A F three made by a company called Zarafa, oh, nice. a Russian uh-huh. drone company. We are giving you stats for that. It's a construction drone. Um, oh, we're also giving, cool. yeah, we're excited about that. We're also giving uh, stats for the Zarafa Panther and the Zarafa Eagle, which are wow. two security drones. Uh, and the, probably the most powerful drones from the game to date, much more powerful than the ones in the core rule book and what we call personal drones up until now, every drone we've encountered in the core rule book or in this are, um, what we call network drones. They require a net architecture. In other words, not only does the drone need to be there, but it's got to have its own server. It runs off of, uh, and either a demon or a net runner is running it, an, an operator, a personal drones, all you need is your, 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 what we call an agent, your smartphone. Hmm. So it's a lot like the little oh, drone you can buy at the store today. So cool. you know, there, yeah, there are three. There's the observer and the transporter, which is the observer is a camera drone, a flying camera drone. The transporter is your flying Amazon package delivery drone. <laughs> nice. Um, which, you know, if it can, if it can carry 40 pounds of knickknacks, it can carry 40 pounds of grenades. Or, just your, saying. or your dog. That's cool. Or your dog. I or like a that. baby. That's neat. Um, so, you know, these are things we present them as they're intended, but what you do with them is up to you. And the third personal drone is my favorite. It's the, my first draft three, which is a <laughs> toy scale version of about three feet high of the draft. Um, it move, it has a move of one, which means it can move one square per round, uh-huh. uh, on, on the, on the map. Uh, and it can only, it only has five hit points. But you know what? A tech could do some really cool stuff to upgrade that because no one expects the toy to be passing, packing plastic explosives or to have the uh, the needle dart in it. Oh, that's nice. I like with that. which to uh, poison someone. Right. It's just, it sounds and like it, something straight out of the movie Toys with Robin yeah. Williams. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is an underappreciated class movie, my friend. That's um, um, I like that. So all that will be in it and it's only going to be available there. It's also, and it's the first chance anybody's going to get to see, to see personal drones. There'll be more in the future, but uh, people have been asking for it for a long time. They want drones that aren't quite as expensive because the net architecture is extremely expensive. Uh, the drones we've done so far are designed to be, you know, corporate security drones. Uh, so we're excited about that. And then beyond that, that's going to be out this year sometime. We don't know when, um, okay. we don't know the retail price yet. Uh, it all depends on how much we're, we're still working that out depends on, uh, the printer and how much they charge us. And then we'll work out the price and it will be going to the printer soon. We've worked out the deal. It's just the fine print that needs to be worked on. And then after that, we've got black Chrome. Uh, we don't have a date on that yet. Uh, black Chrome is a thing book. If anyone remembers our Chromebooks, it is a, mm-hmm. essentially a in universe catalog full of stuff. Oh yeah. And yeah, yeah. black cool. Chrome is going to continue that tradition. Uh, it's going to be about, uh, going to a night market and seeing all this cool stuff. I think that's what Mike has planned. Um, it might be a little different, but the idea of being is that you have all this cool stuff you can add to your game. There'll also be information about how you get stuff because the time of the red is a scarcity economy. It doesn't work quite the same way. You can't just go down to the store and buy stuff. You've got to find the guy that knows the guy that has the stuff. And so uh, uh, we're excited about getting that out. That is in the final art stages, which is to say, um, this book, this is a project we've been working on for a long time since before we actually started finalizing cyberpunk red over the years, the rules have changed as we got, cause gaming like game design, tabletop game design, like video game design is an iterative process. Mm-hmm. Uh, features get moved out. Features get moved in rules, get changed after play testing. Uh, so we are doing final, we had to do have had to do final runs to make sure the rules are correct. And then after that, we had to order the art because we don't want to order art based on old rules. Cause if in the old art, we said it had 
a rocket launcher and then in the new new version it's got a grenade launcher right. those look different right so we had to order why does the rocket launcher look like a grenade launcher? yeah or a grenade launcher yeah. look like a rocket launcher yeah totally uh, yeah Makes so sense. so we're in the art stages we're hoping to have that out sometime soonish i'm not gonna say when because who knows these days sure uh, but sure. hopefully soon enough and Fair then enough. after that we just announced that we're doing an adventure book you're very classic here's a compilation of cool adventures you can go on to uh we don't have a title for it yet mike is assembling this really cool writing team very diverse lots of different writers uh who each bring their very unique perspective to night city and it's going to be uh centered around fixers who give you jobs it's a very classic scenario we're going to start with the classic scenario the fixer has a job for you here it is but you're going to get to explore some very different aspects of night city in each one Mm -hmm. okay and there'll be some cool stuff too that players gms will be able to give to their players or the players will be able to make use of i can't talk about it yet but there's something in it i'm really excited for nice Nice. i can't wait to be able to talk more about it uh that's what we've announced uh there's other stuff down the road uh, we've talked about rustic chrome before which will be a sequel to black chrome which will focus more on nomad style stuff ah. and more less on how you get it and more on how it gets to you because ah. uh, nomads are the transport networks right. of the time of the red uh, beyond that other stuff's in plans early stages can't talk about it yet but we're so super excited and we're going to keep putting out the dlc that free content about once a month there is a third elf line wow. there's been two elf lines so far there's gonna be a third one we're waiting on a very specific piece of art i will tell you that it will definitely introduce monsters to the elf lines world so we're excited about mm. that um and there's some other stuff coming too as we get through so the you know once a month at least we're gonna be releasing some new content you can just yank from our website and add to your game that's awesome. That's awesome. You guys, are, you guys wow. have so much coming. That's awesome. That sounds like yeah. some really cool stuff. Wow. Well, um, man, we're at the end of the show. I wish we could talk another hour, but we're just gonna have to have you come oh. back for another one of yeah. these in the future. Um, we'll have some other topics to talk about in the future. Is there anything else you want to share before you head out? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say um, uh, if you are playing Cyberpunk Red and you're saying to yourself, "God, I wish I had an app." to keep track of all my character stuff uh-huh. and roll stuff and do uh-huh. random night markets for there is one it is called the cyberpunk red companion app you can what? find it on ios and on android um I'm and this right now. Uh, it is it is very cool uh it is free the basic version the uh very talented young coder who is working on it i actually don't know if they're young or not i assume but i've never met them face to face um Could be relatively. is working on premium content which will add new material uh-huh. to it for a small fee you yeah. know because they're giving it free yeah, right yeah, that's there. it Cyberpunk Red, yeah, Companion Cyberpunk Red Companion. that's it right um, and they also have a patreon so feel free to look on that and support them there but it is very cool and it is you know super useful to have your character on your phone that's awesome. That is really nice. That, is that really makes cool. it so much easier, especially if you get a tablet and you can have it set up so you can look at things right away. That's really awesome. Yeah. That's great. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. It, it, it's nice too because it'll, it'll do a lot of all calculating and rolling for you. And that's that's super useful. This is so easy. Wow. Like if you have if you have friends, especially during a pandemic, if you're all playing remote and then you can just be mm-hmm. like, hey, just, you know, keep your character on your app. Just get on a call. We can all just play, yeah. pull your character back up, just keep track of what you're doing. That's so easy. You don't have to figure out where you put your papers or whatever. Like it's so much, so much easier. Um, yeah. That's awesome. That's so cool. Well, thank you again for joining us. This is this is so cool. Uh, how can people reach out if they want to get, you know, talk to you directly about any of the stuff that you've been talking about? Well, for the next week they can't because I'm on vacation. This is my last well, official duty before you I go, go. on vacation. Oh, <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah, my boss just said we're not going to Gen Con, so take a week off. We, actually That's what they cool. said is we're not going to gen con so we're going to take advantage of this and take a trip to the shore together you might as well because uh, mike and lisa of course are a married couple they're going to go off and have a nice romantic week together and they're oh. like yeah you might as well not come to work too i was like cool can i have um, can i have the week <laughs> off too can <laughs> you I, you know what? If you want to take the whole week off and shut down your podcast network, that that's all you, man. You're your right. own boss. All right. Well, uh, as long as, as if Mike says it's okay, then I'll do it. Mike, Mike says that Mike says everyone needs to have some good life work balance. Okay. Don't all make right. the dark. Don't make your future the dark future. Thank you, Mike. Um, <laughs> Mo- mo- no, seriously, uh, you can find us on Twitter at Artelzorian Games. You can find our website, Uh Facebook, uh, there's an Artelzorian Games 
Facebook group. Uh, I generally run into the Cyberpunk and Red and Witcher TTRPG Reddits. Uh, by the way, shout out to the Witcher Lorecast. Yeah, Very good. Yeah, this tomorrow night. Pond Smith episode. Yes, Cody. Cody was on recently. Man, he had. Yes, we could talk about. We could talk with him for multiple yes. episodes in a row and never run out of stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's tomorrow um, night. But, if you guys um, want to join us. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can find us there. Um, in theory, we have an Instagram, which I need to do a lot more with now that we actually have some art to show off. Uh, and uh, we have a Discord, uh, which you can find uh, fairly easily. It's a public Discord, so you should be able to search for it. Awesome. Well, thanks again for joining us. This has been great. Thank you. Yeah. You guys are always lovely. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Well, you're lovely too. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Everybody's got rosy cheeks. All right. Um, Logan, how can people get a hold of you, buddy? Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, do it through the uh, the Robots Radio Discord or hit me up on Twitter at CAPT underscore L O G U N. You can always listen to CFE's content if you were here for the pre show over at Keel Hall Podcast. Just search for CFE's anywhere on where podcasts or podcasts are, and you'll find mine right next to the, uh, the rare official ones. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. You guys can always get, get hold of me on uh, our robots radio discord or on my Twitter account at robots underscore radio. And um, we've got the Witcher lore cast coming up tomorrow night. So join us on Monday nights at our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash robots radio, where we do all of these shows live, including this one. And coming up next in just less than 10 minutes, we have the Mass Effect lore cast. And if you have any thoughts on immortality or cyberpunk red or any of that stuff, or, or you're looking for cyberpunk red actual play shows we have a few on our network as well so go check out robotsradio.net go check out our robots radio discord which a lot of people have been absolutely loving everybody who jumps in there is like man this is the best discord i've ever found so people seem to really dig it so join us on there let us know your thoughts about these things we'd love to chat with you and come join come join us if you're awesome we love you come join us if you're not awesome go join somebody else's discord um, but yeah, come, come hang out with us if you're awesome. We'll see you guys later. Bye everyone. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Cyberpunk Lorecast. This show is a part of the Robots Radio Network, a smart podcasts for interesting people. If you'd like to help support the show, please tell a friend and leave a five-star review on iTunes. If you'd like to get in contact, please send an email to cyberpunklorecast at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter at cyberpunklore. Also, join the community on the Robots Radio Discord. The link is in the show notes. The music on the show was written and performed by The Midnight and was used with their permission. Go check them out at themidnightofficial.com. Until next time, stay safe in Night City. We'll talk to you later. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.